Hi and welcome to another NERPG tutorial. In this tutorial we will be installing and configuring the Invector third-person locomotion template, the basic version, to work with NERPG. Note that this won't work with the free version. You will need a paid version. If you have the Invector Melee Combat template or the Invector third-person controller shooter template, they both include this, so any of those packages will work. For this demonstration, I will be using the Invector third-person controller shooter template. First, you'll need a copy of NERPG, which you can pick up from nerpg.org slash downloads in Unity package format. You'll need version 0.9a to follow along with this tutorial. There will be some pretty big changes in the character structure in future versions, so if you're following this tutorial, make sure you start with 0.9a, and you will need Unity 2019.4.12f1 for that version of NERPG. If you want to follow along, there is a wiki, and the wiki is located at wiki.nerpg.org, and it has the entire set of instructions that I will be following today in order to install and configure the Invector controller properly. So let's get started. I have already created a brand new Unity project, and because it takes quite a few minutes to install the NERPG package, I have already installed that. But other than that, nothing has been done to the project so far. You will want to make sure that you are installing NERPG first, because NERPG requires a certain set of layers and a certain set of tags. However, NERPG is configured so that the first 16 layers are actually the Invector layers, so it's already pre-configured to work with the Invector controller. We'll go ahead and find whatever version of the Invector controller that we have and grab the Unity package and just drag it into our project. There. And once we see that decompressing window, we'll know we've done it properly. Go ahead and ignore the warning here and click the import button. It's just warning you that there are project settings in this and it could potentially overwrite your project settings, but we'll set ours up so that it doesn't. For this message right here, you actually want to skip you don't want to install or upgrade. The reason is because this version of the Invector package is going to actually downgrade some internal Unity packages. So if you hit install, you'll get like 147 errors. Um, go ahead and just hit skip. It's totally safe. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we install the controller part only we are not going to install the project settings. Uncheck that project settings box if you import these project settings, it will absolutely destroy NERPG as it overwrites everything. And NERPG is already configured with the controller settings for the Xbox controller that are compatible with this, as well as the layers and tags that are necessary. So only check the top box and go ahead and hit import. And this will take a minute or two, so you just wait until this box is done here and that's going to be it for installing the actual Invector controller. Next we'll be creating an UMA character with a bone structure that's going to work with the Invector controller. The Invector controller, when you use its new character functionality, requires two things in order to be uh, use the prefab that we're going to give it. It requires that that prefab have an avatar and a bone structure. So we'll just wait until this package is done importing. And then we will continue with the UMA section of the setup. Yep, 
You could probably make this go a little bit faster if you just include the basic locomotion uh, template from that package, as technically we won't be using the melee combat or the shooter. So I guess it's just um, extra time on this wait here if you install those. Okay, perfect, it's done. So now we're gonna go ahead and create our Uma character. So any RPG comes with a prefab that you can use for this that's already configured with all of the right um, with all of the right components and that one is the Uma Invector Player Unit template and that can be found in the any RPG uh, okay let's try that again the Uma Invector player unit template. There, can be found in any RPG engine content templates prefabs character subdirectory. And it's got a minimal set of components on it, the absolute bare minimum needed in order to actually create a player in this version. And it's currently using the male unified avatar. Now that we have the Invector controller installed, we need to configure two things. We need to set the animator, so that's under the Dynamic Character Avatar, under Advanced Options, and we're going to go to the Animator Controller, and we will be selecting the Invector Basic Locomotion. Next, we want to go down to the Animator component, and we want to do the same thing. We want to select the Invector Basic Locomotion Controller. In order for the UMA Bone Creator to work, we will need to drop this UMA Invector Player Unit template into the scene. Doesn't really matter what scene you drop it into. In this case, I'm just dropping it into the Load Game Manager. We're not going to save this uh, scene change, so it's kind of irrelevant where we put it, as long as it's actually in a scene. We'll select that and go to UMA and go to Bone Builder. You can see that it, because we had that selected, it's already in the box there, and we're just going to click on Generate Bones. Now, watch this avatar here. Something interesting is going to happen. What you can see is that we now have a root here, which has the bone structure in it and the avatar has been changed to the UMA Invector Player Unit Template. The UMA Invector Player Unit Template is a scene object only. It's not referring to that one on disk there, so this avatar will actually become invisible at a later stage, but it does need to be here for now. Now that we have the bones created, we can go ahead and create the Invector prefab. So we'll go up to the Invector menu here and we'll go to Basic Locomotion and we're going to click Create Basic Controller. And since this is still selected, then it should automatically show up in the box there. And everything else can be left alone and we're just going to click Create. Now we've got three more objects in our scene. These two, the vGame controller and the vUI, can be ignored. The only one we really care about is the vBasic controller UMA Invector player template. What I'm going to do is pull it into the project so that we can create a prefab out of it and I'm just going to pull it into the player directory here in the Lost Soul example game where I have all of the other uh, player prefabs for that game. And now we have it as a prefab. Next, we're going to need to create a camera prefab. So we will look for the Invector folder open up the basic locomotion, go to the demo scenes, and open up the Invector basic locomotion demo scene. Click don't save. We're not going to keep these changes inside the game manager. We've already made the prefab, so we don't need anything changed in there. 
and here we've got a camera that we're going to turn into a prefab. So I'm just going to go into the camera folder here and I'm just going to pull over the V third person camera and drop it into the disk there and now I have a prefab made from it. In order to make this camera work well with the game, what we want to do is make some changes here. We are going to change from pendulum to default and we're going to click use zoom. This will allow us to zoom in and out with our mouse wheel. By default the Invector controller doesn't allow this and the mouse sensitivity of 3 is a little low. I'm going to switch it up to about 10. If it's 3 I'm going to have to move my mouse back and forth across the screen several times in order to make my character do a complete turn and at 10 it just feels a little bit more natural. Next we're going to configure the Invector controller. So we'll go to the vBasic controller Uma Invector player template here and want to load the Example load game manager not saving this scene. UMA files are a little quicker to work with if you've got a scene open that has the UMA DCS in it. So let's click on that again. And once it loads, okay, we'll close the dynamic character avatar and we're now going to configure the invector settings here. Under the input manager, we want to make sure under the camera settings that lock camera input is checked. If we don't check this, then as we move our mouse around to click on action buttons on the screen, our character will wildly swing his head around and it's kind of a dizzying effect. So we only want the camera to basically pan when we're using our left or right mouse buttons. So locking the camera input means that we have to move it manually and it won't just sort of follow our mouse around the screen. Next, we want to make sure that in the uncheck if you need to use the cursor settings, we're going to actually check that. Um, unlock cursor on start and show cursor on start. And what this means is if we don't check these two buttons, then any time that you click um, with, by default with the Invector controller, the mouse will disappear. And that means that you won't actually be able to click on your action bars or any of the system buttons or anything like that. So we want to make sure that we're showing the cursor and we're unlocking the cursor. And unlocking the cursor basically prevents it from moving the, uh, the camera. We'll also want to go to the the third person controller and open those properties here and make sure we check is immortal. If we don't check this then the Invector controller is going to try to manage the health and our character can die of fall damage and since um, some of these events aren't really easy to gain access to we're going to have any RPG control the character's health um, because any RPG has a lot more flexible health system than the Invector controller does. Under debug, we're going to uncheck use instance. If this box is checked, then as soon as we open a preview window or open our character panel and view the character in a little window, the Invector controller will try to jump our main camera to it um, because it's assuming there's only one Invector object in the scene. So by unchecking this button right here, we'll make sure that it's not going to mess with our camera at any point. I believe that is all that we need to do for the Invector settings. So now that we have both the Invector camera configured and the Invector character configured, we are going to make some changes to our game manager. We'll want to make sure that we check use third party movement control, uncheck allow auto attack. The Invector controller doesn't have any sort of auto attack functionality. so. We want to make sure that that's turned off. Um, if we turn that on, the way that the Invector controller works is that basically you're locked once you begin an attack. You can't move during an attack. And so an auto attack would pretty much permanently lock your character in place, unable to move, basically. So very important that's unchecked. And we're also going to check use third-party camera control. 
The next thing we're going to do is open up the game manager and open up the camera manager. We'll go find that third person camera prefab we made and we'll just pull it under here with the rest of the cameras. Then in the camera manager, we are going to pull in the camera to the camera game object and or sorry, the third person camera to the camera game object and then the actual camera down here to the third party camera. So this is the camera which is a child of the game object. And that's all that we need to do in that section. And finally, we'll make sure that we save those changes. Now in this case, I'm just actually saving these in the scene. I haven't actually just saved them to my prefab variant, um, but you'd probably want to save those settings to your prefab variant if you're actually using this in a game. The setting that controls which characters are loaded is down here in the player manager and we've got two different options here, the default player unit profile and that's if you don't use the upcoming character creator um, then this is the one that's going to be loaded right at the start of the game and then the character creator profile which is once you've uh, used the character creator in game then this one is the one that's going to be used. In an upcoming version, you'll be able to use the character creator before the game, but for this version, it's still two separate things. So in our case, just to make this demo look interesting without having to play through five minutes of content to actually get to the point where you can use that UMA model, we're going to change both of these right here. So what we are going to search for is the default star player unit. And in this case, it's these two objects right here. The example default non-UMA player unit prefab and the example default UMA player unit prefab. We're going to whoops, select both of those. And then under the prefab here, we're going to use that in vector prefab that we just made and that's that v basic controller underscore uma and vector player unit template it's a real mouthful but that's what we're looking for and finally on the non uma we're going to want to set that attachment profile to uma since technically it's now an uma that's it for the game manager configuration And there is one more thing that we're going to need to fix real quick before we're able to start. In the example SoulForge level, there's an issue that works fine with the built-in controller, but not so much with the Invector controller. What we need to do is look for the spawn locations and click default spawn location. We can hit F and it's going to bring us to it. And you can see that it's located a little bit above the ground here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down control shift until this turns into a square box and then just wiggle a little bit. And what it did is it snapped it to the surface. So now you can see basically it's right on the ground. If we don't do that, the UMA character will basically get stuck in a fall loop because the fall is too short for it to register and it wasn't jumping before that. Uh, just interesting thing about the way the controller works. And finally, I believe we are done. That should be all that we need to do. Now, if I got everything right here, I can just load up our example load game manager and press play and we should get a new game starting And actually what I want to do is maximize on play. So make sure that's checked and then try that again.
Okay. We're going to click play and new game and yes. And we start in with our cutscene. And you can see that we can, I'm holding down basically the right mouse button now and it's panning around the character properly at a fairly good pace. Looking at the character with the left mouse button, that's working. And zooming out, we can zoom way out to 80 so the zoom configuration is working. And pressing forward causes our character to move. He can run around and he can do the invector thing where he starts running towards the camera. So that's all working good. And this is definitely the Invector idle pose. If we jump, that is definitely the Invector jump. And you can see that we can open up the character panel here and preview our character. Now, one of the interesting things about the Invector controller is that the way that the mouse zoom works, it's almost impossible to disable it independently. So when you <laughs> zoom in using the mouse wheel um, on this preview, it's gonna zoom in as well. Uh, there ha hasn't been a way that I've figured out to get around that currently. And we can properly click on the menu. So that part is working good. If we talk to the guardian of souls here, then we can talk to him, interact with him, accept quest, click on change my name, and to make sure that it's properly disabling the movement, this is working properly because if I was, um, if essentially what happened is there's a event call here that as soon as we go inside one of these text boxes, it's gonna disable the Invector controller in the background because otherwise your character will actually start running around when you click those keys. So we know that's working good. So now I'm the awesome Wasta Wasta guy. And let's uh, go run around and try a few more things. The Invector controller allows you to do a couple things you can't do with the built-in controller. One of those things is to roll. So if I click the R button, I can roll. And let's see, we'll do a sideways roll and that's working. So that's great. And the Invector controller also allows you to crouch. So I'm hitting the X button right now and I can crouch and I can move around crouch. So that's fantastic. Uh, this is another thing that you can't do with a built-in controller. And so I'm gonna hit X again and now I am uncrouched. And we can also, with the Invector controller, go into um, strafe mode by hitting the T. You can see that now my character is actually just strafing backwards and strafing forwards and strafing sideways rather than actually turning around and we can hit T again to go out of that mode. And this means that our integration is fully working. If we go to the settings panel here, um, these actually aren't the default Invector keys. In the key binding section here, you can see that um, the, let's see if we can find them down here, um, crouch for example. Uh, the default Invector crouch key is definitely not X, so that means that our Invector integration component is actually sending um, these keys or these uh, these key bindings through on startup. Roll with Invector is like Q, so I was pressing R, so that's good. That's also working. And then let's um, actually try another thing that we can't try with the built-in controller here. We're going to run. So if I hold down shift, then you can see my character. Is he actually? Okay, there we go. Now it's working. Basically, you have to start running, and then you can click shift, and then he'll sprint. So perfect. He, uh, he's sprinting around, and that's good. So... A couple of limitations with this that I just want to point out. First, if you look at the feet when he turns, you can see there's a little bit of foot sliding and his footsteps aren't exactly hitting the ground um, 
like he's doing like a little bit of skating and that's because the Invector controller can't account for the movement speed of seven meters per second so the built-in animations I think are like four and a half meters per second we can actually see that if we look at the uh, Invector basic melee we can actually check I think under the 3D models. Let's see if we look at locomotion and free locomotion and walk. Okay, perfect. Here we go. So if we look at the run, um, there we go. You can see the average Z velocity is 3.383 meters per second. So what that means is that if our character is moving at 7 meters per second, the legs are only going to look like they're moving him 3.3 and yeah, there's going to be a little bit of skating. I haven't figured out a way to get around that as there doesn't seem to be a built-in way with the Invector controller to account for animations that run at a faster speed than normal. Um, we should get a quest for the body matic here and if I go up to the body matic and complete that quest then I will be able to cast a spell and then we can actually test out the spell casting features as well and just make sure that the spell casting is working um, because the invector melee controller isn't really designed from the looks of it to integrate with other things that aren't in vector products. So for us, that means that we have to actually use the built-in animations and the built-in animation controller to perform combat and casting. And you can see here we're jumping and we're falling, but we're not taking fall damage, so that's good. The immortality thing is working. I couldn't really figure out a way to configure the Invector controller to not do that falling down animation, so there's a little bit of skating there as well. And now we have learned a spell, so that's good, and let's just see if that works. I'm going to attempt to scroll in or out, like to zoom in or out while we're casting, and you'll see what I mean that we can't. There we go, yep. Now the scrolling works, but while I was casting it was totally locked up there. So this is great, everything is working properly. You can see we were able to cast a spell, and we were able to, um, able to actually perform the correct animation for it. And we can sprint, we can roll, we can crouch, we can strafe, and if we update the keybinds, it will properly send those through to the controller. So why don't we actually just test that out as well. Go to the settings menu and go to key bindings here, and let's turn roll into a different one. Let's do my roll key. It's going to be like the right angle bracket and we can return and continue and if I'm going forward and I'm tapping the right angle bracket on my keyboard then my character is properly rolling so that's great that means the engine is actually passing through the um, the key binds properly to the Invector controller and let's just make sure that our level loading is working properly here this is good news got uh, cute fluffy bunnies running around we can cancel the cutscene and if we reload our scene hopefully we have our invector character he's right here good perfect I am gonna say that this is totally working let's try this spell out here yeah we can see that the spell casting is working I can't do anything with the camera but that's by design so let's pop out of the game for a second then and I'll just really quickly touch on how we're actually sending all those commands over to the Invector controller. So if we go over to the player here and look at our vBasic controller you'll see there is a component on it called the object message controller and 
basically what this thing does is intercept system events that are emitted by any RPG and then passes them on to the current game object using reflection. It's all configured through a template, which means that you can actually write your own plugins basically um, just by adding stuff in one of these uh, scriptable objects. So what it's doing, for example, is it is responding to 23 system events on allow most movement, on disallow most movement, on disable movement, enable movement, death, stun, um, keybinds, etc. And then it's going to configure the Invector controller by sending some sort of response. So in this case, um, let's see what it's going to do. This one's going to set a property directly. Um, using reflection, it's going to look for the Invector V character controller V third person input um, property. And it's going to set the strafe input property of that object with a custom object and so using reflection it is going to create an object called an invector v character controller generic input and then send in the three parameters which are the three keybinds basically so in the background this is just using c sharp reflection to accomplish what all these settings here are doing and you can see, for example, this is another invoke response. Um, some things, um, for example, like on disable movement are using different types of responses. Um, this one is actually going to send a message. So it'll use the unity send message function and call set lock all input um, because the Invector controller actually publicly exposes that so it's, it's a pretty easy one to uh, access. You don't even really have to use reflection for it. So this is how the any RPG system is actually interfacing with the Invector controller and using this method of basically just intercepting system events and then using Unity send message or reflection to you know invoke things or just set properties directly, um, the any RPG code base actually doesn't contain a single line of code that has the word Invector or any reference to Invector anywhere. This is all done completely at runtime. So I definitely hope you found that interesting and I hope that this tutorial works for you and I hope that you enjoy using the Invector controller with NERPG um, and that's new functionality that is available in NERPG 0.9 alpha which once again is at nerpg.org slash downloads and if you want to look at the text version of these instructions instead of rewatching the video, maybe watch the video and then follow through the screenshots to make sure you're doing everything right, you can find that at wiki.nerpg.org and a link to that um, article will also be in the video description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next time.